welcome back to this series on creating your own microcontroller-based hardware designs in Altium Designer. In the first few videos, we went through the block diagrams, seeing what system we're trying to build. Then we finished the schematics over the course of the last few videos. And in this video, we're finally ready to get started with PCB design. This first video will be mainly concerning setup, so creating a board outline, adding mounting holes, setting up design rules, a board in general, and then finally adding components to our design. Following that, we'll do the layout and then the routing in future videos. Make sure always to follow along to get the most out of this video series, and to help you do so, check out the link in the description below to get yourself an Altium Designer free trial. Let's get started. So back in Altum Designer, we finished our schematics. So we went through the overview, power with a regulator and USB-C connector, microcontroller and serial wire debug header, and finally our peripheral section, which contained the initial measurement unit, and we just added an I2C GPIO header to our board. With our schematic done, we performed an ERC check, so an electrical rules check, and got rid of all errors. Now we can finally move on to our PCB document. And the left hand side on the projects folder, you can see adsm32pcb.pcb doc. So double click on that. And that brings open a completely empty and new PCB document. We can move around by right clicking and dragging, zoom in and out by holding the middle mouse button and selecting by clicking and dragging. We're currently in 2D view mode, but we can also go to 3D view mode by pressing three. And then for example, shift and right click, we can rotate, middle mouse button is zoom in still, right click and drag is move around. So this is pretty cool. And this is a view we'll be coming back to quite frequently during our PCB layout and routing process. This 3D viewer is such a useful tool to check mechanical constraints and any clashes to see if silk screen is maybe overlapping and so on. I've already spotted a lot of my own errors just by looking at the 3D view compared to 2D view. So this is a great feature. So press two to go back to 2D view. On the right hand side, we should have our properties panel open. If you haven't, go to bottom right, panels, and click on properties. I prefer doing my PCB designs in millimeters, but if you prefer doing in mils, that's absolutely fine. I'll be using millimeters in this tutorial. So in the units, click on millimeters. I can press G on my keyboard to bring up the grid settings tab. I will use my millimeter grid settings and I usually use, for example, one or half a millimeter for rough placement of components. And when I to tune my component placement, I'll go to a smaller grid setting. So something like 0.5 is fine to start. You can see these rather fine dots in the background show us the grid that's currently being set. So I can set it to a finer one, G and then 0.1. You have to zoom in even more to see these dots. So let's press G again and go back to 0.5 millimeters. Before we can import our components, I like to set up my board and my design rules. For our board, we're probably only going to need two layers, and that is the default setting. On the bottom of Altium Designer, I can see my various layers I have in my design. One is my top layer, which is my top copper. Two is my bottom layer, which is my bottom copper, and I can click on those to change the layer, for example, when I'm routing or laying out components. For multi-layer designs, for more than two, of course, I'd have more layers in the bottom here. Other than just the copper layers, I also have various other layers. So top and bottom overlay, in other words, are the silk screen. So if you want to add text or pin one indicators, those would be on these layers. Then I have my paste layers for the solder paste, top and bottom solder for the solder mask openings, or my solder mask layer, which is a negative layer, and I have various other layers here. I can right click, for example, and hide a layer or highlight a layer. That can be useful later on. And if I move myself up a bit, this button here I can press which brings up the view configuration and I can easily toggle on and toggle off layers. I can also create my own layer sets. For example, if I only want to show all couple layers and so on, we won't go into that in these series of videos. All right, so first let's look at our layer stack up. To do so, go to designs, layer stack manager. For multi-layer boards, this is even more important for just our two layer board. This is where you can add layers, add cores, prepregs and so on and define the stack up of your PCB. This might be manufacturer dependent. It might be constrained to what you have to make, how many layers you need. For us, two layers are fine. We could go to tools, presets, and select a preset. We already have two layers, so we're not gonna bother with that. We can see here we have an overlay layer, which is our silk screen, solder mask layer, top layer, which is our top copper layer, one dielectric, which is just the FR4 material of our PCB, and the bottom layer, again, is just a signal copper layer. Currently set at one ounce copper weight. However, the thickness of the inner layer isn't quite right. It's currently set to 0.32 millimeters. So let's change that to a standard PCB thickness of about 1.6 millimeters to 1.6 and enter. Dielectric constant for us isn't too important, but that's typically 4.6 and we can change that here. 
For our design, we can get away with not using controlled impedance traces, and we'll get to more of that when we come to the layout part of this video. But if you are using controlled impedance, on the bottom side, if I click on the impedance tab, I can add impedance profiles. So Alton Designer contains a 2D field solver, which lets me calculate, for example, 50 ohm traces, 90 ohm differential, anything I want. So this is a really powerful tool. Unfortunately, in this series, we won't get into further into it. Lastly, let me just cover this for the sake of completeness. We can also change our via types here. So if you want blind, buried, micro vias, we can do that here. For most designs, you won't have to touch this. In any case, control S to save to change our thickness of the PCB. We can go back to our PCB and then press three, 3D view. I'll rotate around and you can see the thickness of our PCB is now appropriate with our top and bottom layers. Two to go back into 2D view. One of the first things I then do is set up my design rules. And the design rules are there to make sure your board is manufacturable and you're not violating any design or manufacturing constraints. This could be trace trace clearances, it could be your minimum and maximum hole sizes, it could be what solder mask livers are allowed and so on. In Alton Designer, we can go to the top bar, design, and then rules. And this brings up all of our design rules. And this can be initially quite overwhelming if you haven't seen this before, there's a lot of things to play with. Fortunately for us, and in most designs, you can get away with only setting a few of these design rules and leaving the rest as they are. Now, these design rules are really cool because you can get really intricate. For example, for our USB nets, we could assign, okay, we want to route these with a specific trace width and trace clearance to give us 90 ohms. And other traces, for example, power traces, we can set we want minimums and maximums. So we can get really fancy with all of these design rules. For us, we don't need that many. You might question, where do we even get these from? How do I know what are my minimum and maximum trace widths? And this comes with experience, but it also comes with talking to your PCB manufacturer and seeing what they are capable of producing without any cost adders. So you should try and stay away from minimums and maximums when it comes to PCB design and design rules. If a PCB manufacturer says they can manufacture down to 0.05 millimeters, unless you really need to, you should stay away from that minimum. Pretty much any PCB manufacturer will have this information on their website. Whoever you prefer to choose, you'll probably have this information as well, and they'll vary slightly between PCB fab houses. I've just chosen this one here, which is a fairly popular Asian PCB manufacturer, and went to their PCB capabilities section, and we can see they can produce up to 10 layers for the standard PCBs, various materials, maximum PCB dimensions, and so forth. For us, we only have a certain set of design rules we should enter and which are important to us. For example, this minimum trace over here. This minimum trace and minimum trace spacing tell us how wide our trace can be and how far away traces and general components, pads, copper pores should be from each other. Now they say the minimum is 0.1 millimeters, but if you read their comments on the right, we can see, okay, the minimum manufacturable trace is 0.1 millimeters, but they strongly suggest to have a minimum of 0.15 millimeters to save cost. And this is what I was talking about earlier, that you should stay away from minimums to improve your PCB yield and also to decrease your cost. Of course, in certain designs, those designs will dictate your minimum traces and so forth. So we need the minimum trace spacing. Let's say that's 0.15 millimeters. Let me show you how to transfer that into Alton Designer. So going back to Alton Designer, we need to find the minimum width and that's on the routing on the left side, width. The easiest way, if you do want to do this for every layer, is typing the top here, say minimum width is 0.15 millimeters. For maximum width, we don't really have a maximum, but I typically just set that to one millimeter, just to make sure Altum Designer doesn't complain when I'm trying to route, you know, for example, a 0.5 millimeter trace. You can see in all the layers now, we've set our minimum width, 0.15, and our maximum width to one. Our preferred width essentially doesn't really matter because we can change that anyway, but the default width, I just set at 0.3 millimeters. Click apply to save. And now we've told Alton Designer, okay, these trace widths are perfectly fine to route on our PCB. But remember, there was also a second part. There was the trace spacing. And the way we can do that is going to the clearance on the left side, but further to the top. And we can set all of these different clearances. There's quite a lot of them. There's track to track clearances, there's SMD pad to track, there's through hole pad to track, and so on. So everything that's listed in this table here. In general, you might have different clearances from hole to hole than there are track to track and so on. So for example, track to track, I could type in 0.15 here, and then I'd have to fill in all of this information given what my manufacturer is telling me. Another guideline I would give is that maybe we shouldn't enter 0.15 as our minimum track to track spacing. Maybe we should go a bit larger so we stay away from our minimums. 
Then we can root and lay out our PCB with these slightly tighter constraints and then relax them in case we need to. In this way, we can stay absolutely sure we're staying away from any sort of minimums. So I'd recommend trying to find your preferred PCB manufacturer and copying over clearance and width data into our design rules. For example, I've entered some information like this, again, trying to stay away from minimums too much. Click apply to save. Another few options we have to set, also design rules we have to set, are in unrooted net. We want to check for incomplete connections, so tick that. And further down in the plane section, because we're going to be creating copper pores, and we'll see later in a future video what that means, essentially it's floods or polygons of copper rather than traces, we have different methods of connecting them to pads and so on. So go to polygon connect, and currently we have relief connect set. Click on the advanced radio button, and for through hole pads you want relief, SMD pads you want relief, but via connections I want direct connections. And then click apply. Another important design rule we need to adjust is the via size. And for via sizes, we have a via diameter, which includes the pad, and we have a via hole size, which effect is the drill size after plating. Now, vias is a whole video topic on its own. We will just use one or two standard vias in this video. What's important is that we set our minimum possible via hole sizes, and without any cost adders, that's typically 0.25 millimeters. So I set my via hole size minimum to 0.25. My maximum I'll just set to 0.3, and I'll also set my preferred to 0.3 millimeters. Again, you can get this information from your PCB manufacturer's site, but these are standard vias I've used in many PCB designs and fit general boards, so to speak. Via diameter, which is the total diameter, including the pad of the via, I'll set my minimum to be 0.6, my maximum to be 0.7, and my preferred to be 0.7. This way we get a good sized annular ring to the distance from the outer edge to the drill and this can be a cost adder if we make that too small. Then click apply to save. For the moment these design rules will do as a bare minimum. For your own designs and for more complicated designs make sure you carry over your manufacturer or your PCB design standards recommended design rules into Altum Designer before you get started. When you're done click OK. We're almost ready to import our components. And oftentimes you will be given from maybe from your mechanical engineer, your mechanical design team, an outline where you have to make all your electronic components or your PCB fit that mechanical constraint. So let's briefly talk about origins and creating a board outline. Keep in mind that this board outline might change. If you are free to set this, it might be better to do your layout first and then set the board outline. But I just wanna quickly show you how we can at least decrease the size of this rather huge board to start with and then set our origin, which is this mark on the left bottom here to a more sensible place. There's many ways of doing this in Outen Designer. One might be importing a step file, maybe a rough outline that your mechanical engineer has done, selecting that and then letting Altium Designer figure out the outline, which is a really cool method of doing it. My other preferred method is using one of these mechanical layers, for example, clicking on mechanical one and then drawing an outline myself. So let's just draw a square with rounded corners and then I'll show you how to set that as the board outline. Remember to set your grid by pressing G and then choosing a larger grid like 0.5 or 0.1 millimeters. Let's go with 0.1. Then I'm gonna draw a line, so press P, and then either click on line or press L to start the line drawing tool. On the right tab, we can see there's line width 0.2, so something thin is usually fine, and we're drawing on mechanical one layer. So click anywhere, and then we can start drawing our outline. So we could go up, and we can press space to change our orientation. So I'm pressing the space bar, changing my orientation. And already you can see I'm drawing rounded corners. I can change the corner method by pressing and holding shift and then space, and you can see I'm changing my corner method, and I've selected rounded. So I'm just gonna draw a rough outline, for example, something like this, and right click to cancel the command as we saw in the schematics. To use my measure tool, I can press Control M, click on one edge and the other edge, and you can see I have a 35 by 25 millimeter board, for example. Now we're probably gonna to have to adapt the board shape later on, but I just wanted to show you quickly how we can change the board outline. For example, if you really have a board shape you want, this is the way I would do it, maybe draw it up, and then use that as your board outline shape. To then create the board outline, so if I press three, nothing's actually changed, we've just drawn some lines. So press two again, click and drag to select all of them, go to design, board shape, define board shape from selected objects. And you see, now my board shape has got rounded corners and it's shrunken down to this rather small size. If I then want to place the origin, for example, in the center, the way I do it is I use my measuring tool, go from corner to bottom corner, right click to cancel the command, 
And the label in the center is actually the center of this board. I can go to the top left, origin, set. And I'll place that right in the center. I might have to change my grid size. So G 0.25 and place it right in the center and shift C to cancel the measurement. And here we go. I've made an arbitrary sized board for now. Of course, it'd be better to have proper measurements. And we've seen how we can use a mechanical layer or any layer to draw an outline, select the outline and then define the board shape like so. You can see also see my 3D origin has moved now to the center of the board, for example. So let's import the component as the next step. What I also like to do for smaller projects is turn off something known as rooms, which we won't cover in this video. Go to the top project, project options, class generation, and turn off component classes for each schematic page, then click OK. Next, we want to import our components. So go to design, import changes, and this will bring up this engineering change order. We can see what components will be added. So all of these objects, as well as we'll have all these nets added as well, as well as a differential pair and a differential pair class, which we did with our directives in a previous video. This is also the way if you, for example, later on after we've done or during our PCB design, this is the way we can then also add or make changes from our schematics and import them into our PCB editor. You can either click validate changes and then execute changes or just go straight to execute changes. You should hopefully see loads of green ticks and no errors, which means our import was successful. And then you can click close. We zoom out a bit again, middle mouse button and right click. We can see all of our components have now been added with various layers. For example, our microcontroller on the right here, if we zoom in, we can see the pad names. Again, because we've labeled our nets, we nicely see what pad has what function. We can also see the relevant reference designator next to it, and our connectors and so on. So that's pretty cool. I can press three and again, navigate around and then look at all of my models in 3D. So that's pretty neat. Again, shift, right click to rotate, right click to move, middle mouse to zoom in and out. Again, 2D to go to my 2D view. So I think my initial guess might have been all right in terms of how much size we'll need for the board. We might have to adjust that later on, but we're pretty much ready now to move over to layout and then after that routing. Well done for making it to the end of this video. I hope it was helpful and showed you how we can move from schematic then to a PCB, setting up the design rules, setting up our board outline, origins and so on, and then finally importing components. We're also finally ready to start with our PCB layout starting from the next video. Once we're done with the PCB layout, we can move on to routing and then producing the output files to get our board manufactured. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.